Hi everyone, I'm Mike and welcome back to the Animal Alphabet Challenge. So as you're seeing on screen now, what we do each week is a quick or relatively quick marker pen drawing and I'm tackling subjects that I don't normally tackle. So we're up to episode J. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. I think that's week 10 in terms of episodes. So the weeks are flying by and we're starting to get through the alphabet now. So this week I'm tackling a drawing of a jaguar. Um, as is often the case for, the, for this particular series, um, I'm using a, a royalty-free image from Pixabay. And as you can see, I've got my usual pad of A4 mixed media paper and my black Sharpie marker pen. And I'm just starting to outline loosely and lightly the head of this Jaguar. Now, obviously not too many Jaguars in the southwest of England. Um, so... That's the kind of the idea of this series. I want to tackle things that I don't normally do and just kind of, you know, spread my wings a little bit. I, I will still be drawing and painting plenty of sheep and horses and cows as well, though. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm just working quite lightly here so far. Um, I've mentioned in previous weeks, but do check out the Pixabay website if you're an artist watching this. It really is a great resource and, you know, definitely worth uh, looking into. Um, now, one of the things with the Jaguar, of course, is that it has a patterned coat, you know, this speckled or spotted pattern. And that can often be a little bit of a challenge to tackle. So a good approach in general, I, I would say, is to ignore the patterning completely to begin with. Um, I know other artists uh, say the opposite, actually. They, they say, you know, just focus on the pattern. But I prefer, or some other artists do anyway, but I personally prefer to just ignore the pattern as much as I can initially. So um, I did a video recently on the channel. It's like a 10 minute watercolor sketch of a cheetah where obviously you've got a, a similar problem. Um, so that, that's worth a quick look. I think it's only like 10 minutes or so. Um, and I really sort of simplified the problem. I just ignored the patterning until the end stages of the sketch. And that's more or less what I'm going to be doing here with this Jaguar as well. And then what we'll do is when we add the patterning, we can use the patterning to create a sense of depth and form by just picking out little bits, basically. Uh, that's the plan anyway. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and while I'm sketching away there, you can see that I've started to add a little bit of shade and a little bit of um, texture. I'm still keeping the line work fairly light and I'm just using some hash lines, some you know parallel lines, some slightly curved lines, some diagonal lines to begin to introduce tone. But because it's a relatively complex animal in terms of the patterning, I'm, I'm just going fairly steadily at, at the toned level. So over the years, I've painted quite a lot of patterned animals. Um, Frisian or Holstein cattle, of course, is one of my favourites. Um, I came across Jacob, the, the, the breed of sheep known as a Jacob sheep uh, a few years ago. I did a sketch of those. They've got a brown and white patterned wool or brown and white patterned fleece, I should say. Uh, and I enjoyed sketching those, so I actually came across some more of those the other day, uh, grabbed some reference footage. So I plan on doing a painting demo of those in the near future. Uh, belted Galloway cows, of course, are another favourite. Um, what other pattern animals do I do? Uh, I'll have a think about that and get back to you. Um, so you can see I've worked around the, the whole of the drawing now. I'm, I'm not trying to capture the entire body of the Jaguar. I'm just kind of doing the head, shoulders and the... and the front part of the body and having kind of just loosely put in some gray areas here and by gray I simply mean you know a low density of mark making with my marker pen what I'm doing now is I am coming in now having established the form with light and dark you can see I'm starting to add some of the patterning because it's so strong on the Jaguar you know it's uh, you know it kind of helps describe the form so as I said I prefer to start in this way no pattern at all do the light and dark and then do the patterning to help you. But as I said, I, I did read an article recently where somebody recommended actually doing the opposite. So, you know, wh whichever works for you, I guess. So I'm picking out, I'm not copying the pattern exactly. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the general shapes of the marks and the size of the, of the marks in that part of the animal. And then I'm drawing those marks on what I hope I've achieved there on the top of the head is I hope the addition of the of the speckled pattern, the spots, has 
made that top of the head look more curved than it did before. And that's what I'm aiming to do when I do the uh, when I do the patterning. And while I was chatting away there, you see, I've just added uh, some of the eye in as well, some more detail there. And again, with eyes, I generally work by shading in the sockets, the eye sockets, and then adding the detail on top. And I find that more effective and efficient than trying to do a precise eye initially. But again, with with uh, cats, obviously they've got hunter eyes, so we need to get the look in the eye as, as correct as we can to have an effective drawing. Oh, another patterned animal I did, but it was only a cartoon. Uh, it was a drawing of a zebra, um, but a cartoon zebra. Uh, and I think it was actually a zebra eating a, a jam sandwich of all things. So. Um, and I think it might have been wearing a necktie as well. I will try and find that uh, that drawing for you and pop it up on screen if I can. Um, but talking of zebra or zebras, when we get to Z in the animal alphabet challenge, I have a feeling that may be the animal of choice. We'll see. We'll see how we go. Some of the later um, letters in the alphabet, such as X, uh, might prove to be a little bit of a challenge in terms of finding a reasonable, reasonable A animal and B a reasonable reference for that animal. But we'll we'll see how it goes. So again, you can see I've kind of worked down along the cheek there, popped in the other eye. Now notice that because I put some shading in initially on the right eye, but none at all on the left, then even though I've treated both eyes in a similar way since then, the, the eye on the left really lights up more than the eye on the right. So I'm also adding a little bit of texture now to the lower jaw and around the, the mouth. So in the same way that I'm selective with the patterning that I choose to draw, I'm also selective with the texture. I'm certainly not trying to draw every hair on the animal, just trying to pick out really the minimum amount of information that I think I can get away with. And that minimalist approach, I would say, in general, is a, is a good approach to all subjects, whether it's uh, landscape or animals, still life, whatever you're drawing. Generally speaking, you know, I find that the the less I do, it's or or if you can just do the minimum, generally that has a is a more becomes a more impactful image. Um, anyway, back to our jaguar and just adding some patterning on the chest there and the side of the torso. Now notice again, I'm not drawing in great detail the actual shapes of the patterning. I'm just kind of indicating where they are. So an impressionist style, if you like, but also what that's allowed me to do on the chest, for example, is include some texture. And now that I've moved to the body, again, I'm just selectively picking out the shapes without, you know, worrying too much about you know, having entirely complete shapes. I just want to suggest the pattern and hopefully the overall effect will be one which still looks like the patterning that's on a Jaguar's body. So our big cat is starting to come to life now. So just a moment's pause to have a think about what to do next. And the eyes need a little bit more work. So just want added some shading to the iris there on the left because that was looking a little bit too bright. And kind of add some background color as well. Well, not color, obviously background tone just to bring the cat into the foreground a little bit more. I mean, I guess I could have left it as, as it was actually watching this back now. So that's one of the really valuable things I'm finding with the quick 10 minute sketches is uh, the, the sort of 10 minute time frame means you've, you know, you've got to make decisions and, and be minimalist, as I mentioned just a moment ago, and kind of really pull out the essence of the subject that you're depicting. But equally, when I then watch them back to do this commentary, I get to see what I'm doing and what I might have done differently had I had a little bit more objectivity at the time or, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, obviously. But you can see what I'm doing now is just layering on the the Sharpie pen to give a bit of a dark background to kind of bring bring the animal hopefully out a little bit um, from the white from the white of the paper. And and now I'm gonna go around and selectively just darken certain areas to increase the modelling. So we started off by using just a tonal approach with no patterning. Once that was established, we put the pattern on top, but then there's no reason you can't add another layer of tone over the top of the pattern as well. 
and that that's a nice that sort of layered technique is a nice way to do things in general it usually works quite well to help create because if you think about the the patterning on an animal parts will be in shadow and parts will not be in shadow and although i'm signing it there i am going to do just a minute more on this sketch um, so parts of the animal will be in shadow and parts won't be but also the fur will be ruffled and that will distort the the pattern a little bit or the animal will be, will be twisted and that will distort it and so it's kind of layered approach where you go tone then pattern then tone and then you could even do a bit of extra pattern on top if needed um, that all helps to build the sort of the layers of reality really so I'm coming back in now with a few more details on the face just darkening just decided to darken that uh, left eye looking back at my reference so you know it was a little bit darker than I, than I had it and then when it comes to things like you know whiskers you have to make a decision whether to include them at all or you know or not um, and in this case I, I haven't really included them it's difficult to convey with the sharpie marker pen um, but obviously if you're going to do a photorealistic version then you'd, you'd probably want to include a few a few whiskers but I think this one you know it's getting pretty close to completion for the purposes of this little experiment just a few touches here and there just to kind of bring the jaw out a little bit more shadow underneath the jaw. And then we're getting to the stage now that if we, if we do much more, then we're probably going to over, overwork things, I think. So that's that one finished. There's the finished sketch. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next week for the next episode in the Animal Alphabet Challenge. Thanks very much for watching.